Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Martin Essex, and I'm, as you can see, an analyst and editor here at uh, Daily FX. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, I've uh, worked as an economist for several years, and I'm also a qualified technical analyst. Um, so what I like to do is I like to combine um, technical analysis with economics and politics and so forth. And um, I've also worked as a financial journalist at places like uh, Reuters, the Wall Street Journal, the BBC. Um, these are, of course, my personal views. They're not the uh, the views of Daily FX or of uh, any other company. Just my own personal views. And we are here to look at the eurozone PMI data. Now, the PMIs are important forward-looking indicators for the eurozone economy. Um, We've often said in the past that um, if you look at the official data, it's like looking through the, the rear view mirror of your car. Um, what these PMIs and other forward looking indicators do is they, they, they look forward. They try to um, explain what's likely to happen in the future. Now, we've already had a whole raft of data today, and I want to talk to you about that because What's important is that um, uh, the, these indicators give you an idea of how to trade the rele relevant um, instruments, and in particular, because we're looking here at the Eurozone, where I'm personally based, we're, we're looking at um, how uh, the uh, economy might be affected, therefore how the central bank, in this case the European Central Bank, might react, and therefore what's likely to happen in the relevant in instruments, most notably here the euro, but also some of the stock market indexes. So as I said, I'm going to look at the um, daily FX calendar to tell you what's already been um, released this morning, and as you can see there's a huge raft of data that's been uh, released already. So let's start off with the um, German uh, economic growth data, GDP data. Now this is not the first release. This is um, a, a release that gives rather more breakdown than uh, uh, in the initial, um, excuse me, in the initial flash indexes. So what we've seen here is we've seen, if you look at the figure here at the very top of the screen, this is the German GDP first quarter final, and uh, this is quarter on quarter. You can see growth of 0.6% exactly as um, uh, as in the preliminary uh, number, and also growth year on year. 1.7% exactly as in the uh, initial number. So nothing very surprising there. So let's go down here after all that GDP data to look at some um, PMIs that have already been released. Now we've already seen figures here for both <coughs> excuse me, France and Germany, um, the two largest uh, Eurozone economies. So we can get a good idea from these as to what to expect from the overall Eurozone figures which are coming out soon. And I just need to reiterate, I think, that these figures are important because um, they will affect what the European Central Bank um, decides on monetary policy in the months to come, and therefore what is likely to happen to the euro, and perhaps also some of the European stock markets, such as the um, German DAX and the French uh, CAC 40. So if we have a look here at the, um, the French figures, which were announced first, this is the French um, manufacturing PMI for May, a provisional figure, and as we can see, it was actually um, a tad lower. So manufacturing in France, a tad lower, both than expected and also previous. I won't read out all these figures because uh, there's rather too many of them, but services PMI, better than expected and better than previously, and therefore the composite, which looks at the economy as a whole, or rather the, the private sector in, of the economy as a whole. As you can see, there was a big beat there. So um, what we're seeing is not so much strength in manufacturing, but strength in services and strength overall in France. Now, just uh, around a quarter of an hour ago, we also saw the, um, uh, the figures for um, Germany and um, the manufacturing, this was the other way around, strangely enough, the manufacturing PMI, higher than expected uh, and um, higher than previously. Services PMI, lower, but overall, um, 
the German composite PMI for May, the provisional figure, 57.3. Um, now, for those of you who don't understand these indexes or haven't come across them before, um, a figure over 50 um, implies expansion of the economy, a figure under 50 uh, contraction. So a figure of 57.3 is really quite substantial expansion. So what we're seeing here in the, in the private sector in, in France, the private sector in Germany, we're seeing um, really quite strong economic growth and therefore we're expecting the, um, the, the overall total Eurozone figures to come out um, above expectations too. So manufacturing, uh, we were expecting a figure really not very much changed, sorry I should say we are expecting a figure not very much changed for the manufacturing PMI for the Eurozone as a whole, not much change in the services sector either and therefore not much change in the composite. But I have to say that after these figures for France and Germany, people will have um, revised upwards their expectations and I think now it would be very surprising indeed if these figures didn't come in well above these um, figures here that are from a, um, a survey of uh, economists and analysts. So we're expecting strong growth in the Eurozone economy and I should also mention that at the same time also in um, about 10 minutes time we're also expecting the German EFO index. Now this is a really important barometer of the German economy. Um, this has got a, this is a, a, an index that's been around for a long time, it's got a good um, track record and we are expecting as you can see, uh, this is, this is the, the May figures again, these are all May figures, um, the business climate a small increase from 112.9 to 113.1, 113.1, .1, that's what's expected. But it's not just the business climate, it's also expectations, and this is an important figure as well. And as you can see, um, we're expecting um, an increase there. Current assessments, uh, again, roughly unchanged. So what we're expecting now, even more than previously, is a really strong set of figures. For, um, for the Eurozone and for Germany in particular. So let's look at the, um, in a minute, actually in a moment we'll look at the, um, the, the instruments that are involved, the Euro and so forth, but um, I should I think at this point mention the, um, uh, the atrocity in Manchester in northwest England. Um, a lot of um, children at a pop concert um, seem to have been targeted by a, um, a suicide bomber and there's no doubt that, um, well first I should say that our, our thoughts and our prayers are with all those people, but that will affect the markets today, perhaps above everything else, especially the, the UK markets and uh, um, it's perhaps a little, um, well it doesn't quite seem right to discuss what's going to happen um, in the markets when, when so many people are dead. But I think you can say that um, the, the overall tone in the markets today is going to be risk off. Um, we, we've already seen some pressure on sterling and some uh, increases in um, the prices of safe havens like the Japanese yen and for gold. Um, it does seem wrong to discuss the markets when, when there is such an atrocity, such a horror. But um, obviously we we need to include we need to look at the markets as well. So let me look at the um, uh, where we are at the moment on the markets, and um, I want to start off by looking. This is the, the the France 40, but actually I want to look first at the um, the euro because that's where um, these figures will have their most important impact. So <clears throat> excuse me, I have a sore throat. Um, Looking first at the euro against the dollar, so this is a daily chart of the euro against the dollar and as you can see there's been a really strong upward trend which started around here, um, let's get the um, time frame here right, and um, this is a chart by the way of 2017 as a whole to date, euro against the dollar daily, um, a daily bar chart and um, sorry, <laughs> a daily candlestick chart and as we can see from here about the 12th of May, which is what now, um, 11 days ago, we've seen a really quite strong rise here in the euro against the dollar. Though I think to some extent that's uh, reflected um, euro, uh, not so much euro strength as dollar weakness. So we have seen an upward trend here, uh, quite a strong trend in the euro against the dollar. And um, 
we always say here, at least in, in technical terms, that when there's a trend, you might as well go with it. You might as well go with the upward trend. Um, so the price here is above these um, three moving averages that I've put in. This is the 20 day, the 50 day, and the 100 day. So that again shows a strong upward trend. But if you look down here, this is an RSI, which is a momentum indicator. And broadly speaking, a figure over 70 shows a market that's overbought. And here, as we can see, the market is now slightly overbought. So there's a word of caution here in, the, um, in this particular chart. Let's have a look at some other charts, though, of the euro um, against some of the other currencies. And let's look um, at euro sterling, for example. And this is over the same period. This is um, 2017, and it's a daily candlestick chart. And here you can see exactly the same upward trend here. You can see the trend of the euro rising against sterling. Again, it's, um, it's above these three moving averages, 20-day, 50-day, and 100-day. And um, not quite in overbought territory yet, but um, very close to. I'm just going to have a drink, if you'll excuse me, to uh, to try and clear my throat a bit. Um, so that's uh, year against the dollar, year against sterling, and the, they're both very similar, both up trends, both above their moving averages. But whereas year against the dollar is um, is, is in overbought territory, this one isn't, although it's getting very close to it. And if we look also at, um, what haven't we looked at? Year against the yen, for example. Um, once again, this is 2017 to date. Uh, this is the, the chart. And um, here, uh, as you can see, uh, yet again, a, a strong rise um, upwards in the euro. So the euro has been strong all round against the moving averages. RSI close to overbought territory, but not quite in it. So from a, a technical viewpoint, you, one always says that one should um, uh, go with the trend. And the trend here is clearly upwards in the euro against um, pretty much uh, all the um, all the uh, other principal currencies. Um, we're seeing um, the uh, a rise in the euro, which is reflected um, suspicions now that the European Central Bank, that's the Eurozone's central bank, will um, uh, at some point have to reduce its monetary stimulus. Now, as I'm sure most of you know already, it's the, um, the, the this is the most important factor when looking at a currency. Um, this is, um, uh, we want to know what the Eurozone monetary policy is because that, to a very large extent, will determine where the currency is going. If monetary policy is tightened, um, then um, you would expect um, uh, currency to rise, and if Eurozone uh, monetary policy is, uh, is further eased, which is not going to happen, then uh, you'd expect the currency to come down. So we're getting quite close to the figures. They're about um, a minute and a half away now. I'm going to go back to the Euro dollar chart now. And in particular, I'm going to look at just a one minute chart. So this is a chart of um, the, the instant movements, if you like. And uh, this is going back to, um, this is Tuesday, which is fine. This is broadly speaking in trading hours. But uh, um, I'm going to come right in now from about the start of European trading this morning. So when Europe took over from Asia. Here you see a slightly different picture. You see, um, as I said, this is a euro dollar chart. This is, um, this is the euro uh, so far this morning in Europe. Um, we've seen it rising gently and then falling back. Um, the data are now due uh, very shortly. And um, just to remind you that we're looking for um, uh, we're looking for the EFO index, but also we're looking for the uh, manufacturing services and composite flash PMIs. Um, all of these will be important. All of these will determine the direction of the um, of the currency and of the stock markets. So. Um, what we're expecting to see, as I said, is uh, an improving trend. Um, the, um, the the previous Eurozone figures were at um, uh, six-year highs, and I think it would be a surprise if they weren't now at new six-year highs. 
so the uh, market manufacturing flash PMI, manufacturing flash PMI, as I suggested, is higher than expected at 57.0. That's higher than the previous figure and higher than expectations. The, um, the services sector um, missed expectations very slightly down to 56.2, expected at 56.4. But most importantly, the composite PMI, so this is both the manufacturing and services sector, is um, higher than expected and uh, equal to the prior months. So 56.8 for the market uh, composite flash PMI for the Eurozone, 56.8, unchanged from April, these are May figures, um, but um, a tad higher than expected, 56.6. Now we've also had the um, the EFO figures in. These are the German business climate figures from the EFO Institute in Germany, and um, that business climate index again. These are May data, higher than expected, 114.6. It was expected at 113.1. Previous 112.9. So, oh sorry, the figure the previous one's being revised to 113. Um, but anyway. Um, to cut to the chase, um, a, a much higher figure than expected and um, uh, showing continuing strength in the Eurozone economy. Current conditions, um, higher than previously, higher than expected, and expectations. Now, this is perhaps the most important one. So this is looking forward, 106.5, higher than expected and um, higher than previously. So all in all, um, a very strong set of um, Eurozone um, forward-looking indicators. I think that's the bottom line. We've seen strength in France. We've seen strength in Germany. We've seen strength in the um, Eurozone as a whole. And if you look at the chart in the last few minutes here, the Euro has indeed um, picked up. It, it started picking up before the figures here. This is, this is a couple of minutes before. And um, it's picking up again. So we are seeing um, uh, the strength of the French, German, Eurozone economies reflected in a rise in the Euro pretty much as we'd predicted. So um, overall I think we can say that we're seeing um, a continuing improving trend. Um, we're seeing further strength, um, we're seeing the EFO index pointing to improving business confidence and uh, I think it would be very surprising if um, the Euro didn't remain um, reasonably strong as a result, as I was saying, go with the trend, um, the trend is clearly higher and um, uh, it would be perhaps um, uh, unusual to take a contrarian view to that at the moment. Um, let's see what's happening to some of these um, other euro crosses because I think that will be interesting as well. Um, euro sterling, um, we are, this is a daily chart so let me go into the one minute chart again just to see exactly what's happening. Uh, again since, um, let's have a look at the time scale on this, so this is nine o'clock, uh, sorry, here is nine o'clock. We're just seeing uh, the euro uh, move higher against sterling. Sterling, of course, affected um, badly by that uh, attack in Manchester, the bombing in Manchester. Um, uh, so perhaps more important uh, in every way than this, but still, um, if we look at the euro against the yen now, and let's go from a daily chart to a um, to a one minute chart and oh now that is interesting because um, what we're seeing here is what we so often see in the markets um, is um, this is nine o'clock here so we saw the market go up against the end but then fall back I said so this is a one minute I wouldn't take too much um, pay too much attention to it but what we often see when these figures come out is that we see um, the market's uh, positioning is important and um, you see an initial move in one direction swiftly reversed. Um, nonetheless, I, I'm not going to change my overall view that um, these are strong numbers, that these are um, pointing to really quite substantial European growth. And, um, uh, and uh, that is bound to make the European Central Bank think about withdrawing some of its monetary stimulus. I'll just go back just so we have the chart on the screen of looking at the euro dollar because this is the most important of all the um, uh, of all the, the pairs and crosses that you can trade in forex. This is the um, uh, 
uh, accounts for much, it's much the most liquid market and so that's probably the one to concentrate on and uh, we're already seeing quite a strong reaction downwards uh, in the euro against the dollar after that initial climb higher. Nonetheless, I mean, from a uh, from a, a trading point of view, I think it's important to to recognise that these one minute movements immediately after data can be totally erratic, and probably one shouldn't pay too much attention to them. Anyway, I was talking about the um, the European Central Bank, and um, clearly it, its monetary policy at the moment is hugely stimulative, and therefore we're looking at some point for the ECB to reduce its monetary stimulus. Nobody's expecting um, an increase in Eurozone interest rates at any time in the near future. It is possible though that it might just reduce some of its bond buying. It might just decide that um, uh, just a tiny um, reduction in its bond buying um, is called for now that the economy is growing so strongly. Inflation is not particularly a problem. And um, I'm not expecting this to happen soon, um, but I think it will be um, on the agenda and I think that um, that's why we have to look at um, uh, what the European Central Bank is saying. Of course, the central bankers do tend to signal things well before they actually do them. And so I think we can, we can look at, uh, in particular, what Mario Draghi says, um, the president of the ECB, about um, possibly withdrawing monetary stimulus. I think we have to look at the, the language of these people just to make sure that um, um, we understand what it is that they're planning for the future and parsing the words if you like. Now there's um, another point I should make here which is that the Germans are beginning to push um, even more strongly for the ECB to um, uh, to, to reduce monetary stimulus. We've heard many, many times the German finance minister um, Wolfgang Schäuble um, uh, talk about um, the need for the ECB to reduce its stimulus um, almost as regular as clockwork. Um, uh, uh, Wolfgang Schäuble comes out and says that um, Eurozone monetary policy is, is too loose um, for the German economy and uh, we hear Mario Draghi, the ECB president, saying that he has to look at the Eurozone as a whole, not just as its biggest um, member. What, what's happened this week, um, yesterday, um, was rather more unusual, which is that Angela Merkel, the German Chancellor, Schäuble's boss, actually came out saying that the Euro is too weak. Now, that was a big departure for her. She's facing um, uh, re-election uh, later this year, and um, it's important um, that she would that she would say something like that. Unusual saying that the euro is too weak for the needs of um, the German economy. So still more pressure on the European Central Bank to to um, reduce its monetary stimulus. As I said, we're not expecting an increase in interest rates in in the eurozone, but we could um, see uh, a little bit more. Um, uh, 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 some of the money taken off the table effectively. Um, these indexes um, are at their highest, uh, sorry, going back now to the um, PMIs, uh, they're at their highest for more than six years, which just show you the strength of the Eurozone economy, which is one of the fastest growing economies now in the developed world. And I think as a result of that, uh, we have seen really quite substantial inflows into um, European bonds and equities. And I should um, actually look, shouldn't I, at uh, what's happening in the stock markets as well. So um, let's have a look at some of the main um, stock indexes for Europe. Um, this is the France 40, the CAC 40, and this is a daily chart. And uh, no surprise, I think, to see this market going up and up and up and up. This is, uh, I think, 2017 to date. Yeah, 2017 to date. So we've seen really strong rises here in the um, in the French stock market, the CAC 40, the main stock market index. Uh, we saw a peak um, back here a few days ago. Let me get the exact date. Um, yeah, the 8th of May, so um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we saw the index um, at a new high. And it has come off a little bit since then, but beginning to move um, upwards since then. And let's come in to say, uh, let's look at the five-minute chart, shall we? Um, 
and uh, as you can see that uh, this morning, uh, sorry rather today, when the market opened here, um, we saw strong rises here in the um, in this index, which are continuing. And again, you see, um, from a technical point of view, um, don't try and uh, buck the trend. Uh, the trend is higher, and it's probably worth going with that. Although, again, looking at this RSI down here, this momentum indicator, it is now in, in quite severe overbought territory. So there could be a bit of a reaction. Let's go from France to Germany. This is the Germany 30, the, um, the DAX index daily. Uh, exactly the same picture really. Strong rises throughout this year on the daily chart, a peak up here and then beginning to tail off but in the last few sessions uh, starting to rise again. Let's have a look at what's happening today on the five minute chart and uh, all the pictures pretty much exactly the same there too. So we're seeing a strong rise in um, in German stocks as well as in French stocks and just I'll keep up on the screen now just so you can see it the um, the latest in the euro dollar so here's the euro dollar I'm going to go now from one minute to five minutes because I don't think that one minute is particularly relevant anymore so we're seeing um, to get the time frame right uh, this is the data released at nine o'clock and um, we're seeing uh, I suppose you could say broadly sideways trading here um, one thing I haven't mentioned so far is Greece. Now, um, a, a new Greek um, debt deal uh, really is looking quite fragile at the moment. It's not um, by any means a done deal that, that Greece will get more money from its creditors. And uh, that is something that's um, perhaps a worry in, in the further future. Greece hasn't been a market factor for a long time now, but it is beginning to, to emerge as an important factor and that could perhaps hold back the euro. That is one thing that, um, uh, the, the, that people might conceivably worry about. So I'm going to summarize now um, the, the, the figures. Uh, these are the, um, the, the Eurozone PMIs, the PMIs for France, for Germany, the German GDP data, the EFO index, a huge number of index uh, of um, data releases that have just come out. Um, all broadly speaking, better than expected. Um, the trend in the uh, Euro is higher although, um, as I said, there are worries about Greece and to some extent this is about a weak dollar um, rather than a, a strong euro, but nonetheless we're seeing the euro advance also against other currencies like the um, Japanese yen and sterling. Um, context, well, the, um, here we're looking at what the ECB, the European Central Bank, does at its uh, next few meetings. Um, we're expecting them to take some of the uh, uh, st uh, to reduce its monetary stimulus, to take some of the steam perhaps out of the Eurozone economy. Um, if you're looking at all this data, the, the, t the currency to look at, of course, is the Euro, um, but don't forget that you can trade the stock markets as well, so you can look at these, um, the two largest Eurozone um, stock markets, the, the French market and the German market. Um, if you're bullish, I would always go. I think with the um, with euro dollar because it's the um, the largest, most liquid market. It's uh, um, actually, I suppose it's the preferred market whether you're bullish or you're bearish. Um, there's too many other factors that affect the stock markets, like um, obviously company results, um, what the major companies are in the index, are they banks, are they oil companies, or whatever that kind of makes it uh, slightly more um, complicated. Um, the data um, certainly fits, as far as I can see, into these um, uh, into the bullish scenario for the currencies. Even though the, the, the euro is, is, has come off a little bit, um, just a tiny bit against uh, other currencies. Um, after these figures, I would expect that to re to be reversed. Um, looking ahead. Um, I should say that this is a hugely um, busy day for data, not just in the Eurozone but elsewhere. Um, we're expecting in a quarter of an hour's time some um, UK data. We're expecting um, the public sector borrowing figures and um, all in all, um, a busy day for data. We've also got the um, flash PMI from the United States coming out um, uh, this afternoon, our time here in Europe. and. Um, 
with that, I think it's about time I signed off. Um, I hope you found this uh, useful. I hope you'll join me in future for more of these um, data webinars. Um, we have another one coming up in um, uh, just under two hours' time. It's a, a European. It's, it's a um, the European Desk Roundtable, at which uh, I and my colleagues will talking about uh, Europe more generally. Um, this is at um, eleven o'clock BST. You can adjust that for where you are. Um, so just under a couple of hours time we'll be talking about the um, uh, what the major factors that are affecting Europe at the moment and the European markets more generally and um, uh, I hope you'll join me and my colleagues for that but for now goodbye